If your level of ambition doesn't scare the people around you, you're not aiming big enough. I like that. I want to be so competent that I will push humanity forward. I want to build robots that cook and clean for you and take care of the house. I want to have a robot dog. I'll feed him electrons, I'll teach him some tricks. What does it take to have the skills to contribute? Beginners are often focused on like what to do. And I think the focus should be more like how much you do. You literally have to put in 10,000 hours of work. You will waste time doing something wrong. Yes. You will eventually figure out it's not right. You will accumulate scar tissue. Mm -hmm. And next time you will grow stronger. There is no optimal path to programming. There is only hard work and long hours. How to get into programming? You are never going to learn programming by watching a video called Learn Programming. Everyone I've ever met who can program well yeah. learned it all in the same way. They had something they wanted to do, and then they tried to do it. You know, that's how you learn. You just keep pushing on a project. The only advice I have for learning programming is go program. Oh no, 10,000 hours, hard work, blood, sweat, and tears to make the paint taste sweeter. <laughs> okay, sign me up. Just sign me up. Or you're signing yourself up for suffering? Don't you want to be happy? Don't make me repeat myself. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of Attack on Titan scene when they were recruiting themselves for Survey Corps. Four年後には、ほとんどが死ぬだろう。しかし、それを超えた者が生存率の高い優秀な兵士となっていくのだ。自分に聞いてみてくれ。人類のために心臓を捧げることができるのか。みんないい表情だ。では今ここにいる者を新たな調査兵団として迎え入れる。これが本物の敬礼だ。心臓を捧げよう。よく恐怖に耐えてくれた。君たちは勇敢な兵士だ。心より尊敬する。Hello, good morning, the future rocks, get to work. <laughs> so I had some courses noted down to start off my journey, but I really wanted to start with the course from Andrew Ng, because he's such an important person in AI. He co-founded Google Brain and Coursera. It's like, he might have some experience that nobody else has. I was like, yep, yeah, let's start here. So I started with his first free course of machine learning specialization, Supervised Machine Learning, Regression and Classification. Let's see. And that was my day one. Five hours of sitting and I finished the first course. It was actually quite boring, mostly just watching lectures. But I learned something. Now what? I wanted to try different courses, but then I saw this. A seven day trial for a full specialization and a certificate at the end. And I'm doing a week long challenge, like, it works for me. For free, that's, that's a fair price, if I have to be honest. <laughs> but that means that I'm committed to making a whole specialization. A nice thing about commitment is that I was getting more interested in the topic as I spent more time on this. It's the IKEA effect, which is best summarized by the more effort someone put into something, the more they will value it. This course is not extremely fun. I could be playing video games, but that's why it has value, because it's not that easy. And it's getting more and more fun as I gain skills. The second course was all about recommendation systems, which really made me connect some dots, and I'm happy I got the knowledge, especially from Andrew, who probably personally contributed to recommendation systems even on YouTube. 
Now I can exploit the knowledge and get more views. Think about it. And the third course was the most interesting, reinforcement learning. Andrew even flexed with the autonomous helicopter they met at Stanford. And by watching a human pilot learn to fly, it then learns to fly by itself. Okay, I'm not too expressive, but this face says, damn, that's so cool. I was like super ready to put the knowledge to use as soon as I was done with the course. Here's my mental note from all three courses so I can remember what I learned and come back to it in the future. And that, ladies and gentlemen, closes off our machine learning specialization. I got a certificate I can flex with, but that's not the point, am I right? We cannot stop here. Another course recommended to me by my friend was Fast AI course made by Jeremy Howard. It's called Practical Deep Learning for Coders, and it was exactly that, a course revolving around practice. Howard's approach is a top-down approach, so build first, do something practical without understanding what you're doing, and then strip down the layers of abstraction. So I just wanted to see what it's all about. So for example, Andre Kapathy told me that at Tesla, I think he said pretty much everybody who joins Tesla in AI is meant to do this course. Uh, I believe at OpenAI, they told me that uh, all the residents joining there first do this course. Um, so this, you know, this course is really widely used in, in industry and research for people, um, and they have a lot of success. Well, this is crazy. I'm glad to be here alone. <laughs> That's actually impressive. <laughs> this course doesn't take you by hand, but expects you to play around with the code yourself. A ton of good resources to play around and do something practical, but I'm not sure if I would understand as much as I did without taking the previous course. But remember what Carpet he said, just spend time on this. It doesn't really matter where you begin. When I edit this video, it's already been a month since then, so I actually watched all eight lessons. They really give you everything you have to know to start participating in Kaggle competitions, which are simply machine learning competitions on different datasets to compete against models of other people. Anyway, I watched the first lesson and I was like, okay, I'll finish the course one day, but now I want to do something different, something practical, learn PyTorch. No ready models, no fancy libraries to do stuff for me, just PyTorch and my own neural network. The plan was simple and really good. I wanted to play with Gymnasium, a library originally made by OpenAI for testing machine learning models in various environments. Where do I begin though? I watched a quick introduction to PyTorch oh. and decided to install CUDA for faster computation locally. Yet this could have been a mistake if I had to be honest. All courses I've watched so far were using cloud GPUs. People use Google Colab, Jupyter Notebooks, Kaggle Notebooks. The reason for it is that it just works. Also, the ability to run each cell separately and see the output of each cell separately without endless print statements is pretty handy. But you know what's the problem here? You start relying on someone else. Where is that cloud even? I'm in the cloud as far as you can tell, because you don't know where I am. Okay, to be fair, I didn't know the advantages of cloud GPUs back then. I was just like, I want to use my usual pie charm for everything. Let's do it locally. What can go wrong? Big mistake. Big mistake. Turns out everything can go wrong. <laughs> I don't understand how installing and running AI models locally is the biggest pain in the ass thing to do ever. Why can I install 16 prerequisites manually, have via installers, have via Python command line, and the whole thing fails if the version is wrong on any of them? Because of course you cannot just install the newest versions. That would be too easy. You have to check which version supports which. I spent a lot of time here trying to mash everything together and my CUDA was still not working. But it turned out that the biggest mistake I made was using the wrong Python interpreter because all of the components were installed on another one. <sighs> really? Maybe this? Maybe yes. Good job. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now with this, Yes! Oh, the fans are spinning. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. <laughs> Why am I so happy? Why am I so happy? That's an achievement. 
<laughs> That's such an achievement. We did nothing, absolutely nothing. At least we missed on this. Oh, now I'm ready to do like everything. It took me an embarrassing amount of time, but the final process for inside CUDA is pretty simple. Okay, it goes like this. PyTorch, download PyTorch, but it only supports CUDA 11.7 or 11.8, so install CUDA first. Go to CUDA installer, not the newest one, not 12, but go to archive and 11.8, the newest one supported by PyTorch. Then install CUDN library, not 12.x, but 11.x, right? And now we're ready to install PyTorch, and it should all work if you choose the correct interpreter. But finally, CUDA works, now install Gymnasium, and let's go. Yeah, about that. The plan was great, right? The plan was fantastic. Install Gymnasium. However, box 2 d not installed, and it doesn't want to be installed, and no solution from the internet works. I tried everything. I was even installing Visual Studio C++ build tools. What? Why? Why? <laughs> okay, it's fair to say that I was desperate. Sometimes we all are desperate for just a little bit of dopamine, right? And it's not a reference to anything, you silly. Mm, anyway, you know what's my happiness? Watching George Hotz. That's a five. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Deep learning doesn't work. <laughs> I was really in the mood of, it's it's so over. There is no way to install this. But I remember one guy saying, when the it's so over comes, just keep working until the we're so back returns to your heart. And so I did. I actually wanted to watch George Hoss build a simple neural network in PyTorch, because now I was able to understand something at least, and it was really fun and productive. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Twitchies. Let's hope we have good enough Wi-Fi for streaming. Wi-Fi for streaming. Wi-Fi for streaming. Wi-Fi for streaming. And I thought that I would share it with the streamers. Um, <laughs> so much positivity. Welcome, my streamies. Welcome, my streamies. As long as I'm not, you know, blocked like the New York Post story. You guys can all come in here. Death, you know, it's just it's just relaxing on a beautiful Saturday. Three, and we'll use a uh, logarithmic soft max. So that shouldn't be a problem. We got a right forward pass. You take in an X. We apply layer one to it. Run. Train, 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 train. Oh, uh, loss goes down. Accuracy goes up. Oh, uh, let's not. Let's click that. All right, cool. Beautiful. Loss goes down. Accuracy goes up. Everybody's happy, right? It's a nine. Oh no, it's a nine. That's really a nine. <laughs> Let's change it until it's a, a nine. I mean, like, you understand where it's coming from, right? Is that more four -y? Oh, now it's a four. Yeah, now it's a four. That's right. That's a five. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Deep learning doesn't work. <laughs> Still a five. <laughs> Work. We're putting it back to four, and we're just calling it. <laughs> Deep learning doesn't work. No, we like to end things on a positive note. A nice four. Oh, someone wrote a nice four. Oh, a user four. No, your four is too large. <laughs> Let's just see if it works. Oh, that, <laughs> what the hell kind of four is that? <laughs> List has no attribute reshape. That's what kind of four that is. <laughs> Your four is not even the right size. It's 812. That is undisputably a four. Beautiful, that one's a four. That is a solid four. It prints four. Let's see how convinced it is that that's a four. Oh, super convinced. Wait, what? Isn't that number bigger than that number? Zero, one, two, three. Oh, four is over here. Oh, I didn't count right. Oh, look, it's so convinced it's a four. Yep. And then, just to finish the day off, I played a little with Kaggle Notebook from lesson one of Fast AI course. But I didn't really make anything productive other than running code. I was just kind of sad that I'm forced to use these notebooks. Until I did this. 
Okay, I actually didn't record it. I was randomly clicking around before going to bed. Okay, how about I install this library from inside PyCharm? And it magically worked. I have no idea how it differs from pip install. Like, no solution from it and it worked. Nothing worked for several hours. And this worked. Like, I don't know what you want me to say. It, it just magically worked. That was a hell of a day. But ultimately, we're so back, return to my heart. During my sixth day, I was just playing around with the code and revising material from the machine learning course to make sure I understand the task. I also copied some example code from Python's documentation to make it work so I can analyze a working project. Deck you pronounced deck. Okay. Decks were used for storing memories, which were a part of DQN learning algorithm that I was trying to understand. And trying is a good word here. Final day, I went to finally train the network. And I did. But the word train is again a bit over the top here because my algorithm showed no sign of progress whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, it was more like a regress, because it rotated the lander and then bursted the main engine to crash as fast as possible. Yeah, we have to change the strategy. We need changes, something has to change. <laughs> don't look at the graph, don't ask me. I prefer not to speak. If I speak, I'm in big trouble. I prefer really not to, um, not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. The final state of my network at the end of day 7 was this graph and this network. Oh, he doesn't care. He couldn't care less about landing. You could even say that he's thinking independently. And he's not a sellout. And we respect that. But not tolerate. I deleted the network, you'll never see him again. That's his punishment and he asked for it. And that's it. 7 days. It was not full 7 days. I had some responsibilities in the meantime. Uh, I hope to go real monk mode more and more often in the future. If you saw my shot from a while ago, the network works pretty well now and I'm making progress with other things and I'll see where it gets me. Also remember my promise for this year to make a video on a week long challenge. This was it, I think, I hope, I guess. And I hope to make more of it in the future, As a, of course. But for now, thanks for watching, good luck and I'll see you in the arena. And I want you to remember that we entered the arena just a little as a treat.